Joining us here at Post 9 is Holly Newman-Croft, Senior Wealth Advisor for Newberger Berman Private Wealth. It's good to have you back. Thanks, So Sarah. you're clearly not changing the bearish tone and getting interested in the market here. I know one of these days I'm going to come on and be so <laughs> bullish, but that day is not today, not yet. What's keeping you feeling cautious? I mean, there are a lot of um, negative headwinds in this market. And I think when you look at the market today and peel back the onion on the performance that we're seeing, it's all attributable to six stocks. And when you strip those stocks and look at the equal weighting of the market, market performance is actually flat. So while we do have an up market and that can be attributed to how tech has done and AI and you know, the jobs market, employment is very, very strong, and we've got strong balance sheets for both consumers and corporations. We see a lot of headwinds coming our way, so we don't think that this is sustainable um, to, for the rest of the year. Namely, the economic downturn that you think is not fully reflected? Yeah, I think the market is putting too much credence on the fact that there will be a Fed pivot. Um, I think there's, gonna, there's consensus that there's going to be a recession. No one knows when. Our view is that a recession is going to be in 2024. We think the resiliency of the market has pushed that recession into next year. And if you look historically, the market tends to peak about six months before a recession. So that would even make sense as to why the market is a little bit stronger today. It also outperforms, though, when CPI peaks. So, I mean... What about that analog, that we're on the backside of what was pretty awful inflation? Yeah, inflation, it's coming down, and it's nice to see those numbers come down, but it's coming down too slow, and the, the inflation number is still too high to really be sustainable. So the Fed is committed to combating that number. They haven't veered off their long-term target of 2%, but we don't think we're going to get there until the end of next year. And so we're dealing with higher rates, for longer and in high inflation. And any discussion of productivity or AI or reinvention of workforces is, is too long a cycle to get in front of that cycle. Yeah, AI, this news is great. We don't think it, it warrants companies doubling or tripling um, in such a short, condensed time frame. We've seen this movie before. We've talked about it with crypto. You know, you, sectors get hot and then they come down. The market tends to get excited and react and then think. So AI's been around. We've been considering it in our evaluation of tech companies and portfolios for a very long time. We don't think it's going to take over the world just yet. So let's get to the advice. You manage three and a half billion dollars of assets for, for wealthy clients. Where are you putting them? F fixed income still? Yeah, we're, we're still positioned quite defensively. And, and admittedly, that has hurt some of our clients' portfolios for the beginning of 2023 because we continue to be underweight equities, we are overweight, high quality fixed income, short duration, and we are continuing to be overweight alternatives. We still like private equity, we like private credit, and although commodities have had a pullback, we think they have a real strong position in portfolios as a hedge to inflation.